Jeremy Grantham is a well-respected investor who's long predicted the sell-off across markets in 2022. At the moment, he says we're entering the final stages of a super bubble, which is spanning at least three different asset classes, the housing market, the equity market, and the bond market, and the prices have much further to fall. So in this video, we look at his arguments and we look to see what it means for investors. So let's look at Jeremy Grantham's super bubble, the final act, in a bit more detail. This video is sponsored by NordVPN, an app that lets you securely connect to the internet across all of your devices from anywhere in the world. Let's begin with Grantham's definition of a super bubble. A bubble is when euphoria drives up the prices beyond fundamentals for one asset class. It might be equity, it might be commodities, it might be bonds. But in a super bubble, you get a simultaneous bubble across multiple asset types. So for example, at the moment, the housing market's looking expensive at the same time as the stock market and the bond market. And according to Grantham, that's setting us up for a fall across multiple asset types simultaneously. Now, there have been several examples of super bubbles in the past. For example, in the US in 1973, you can see that there was a bubble in the stock market, the bond market, and the commodity market, or at least there was certainly a commodity shock at the time, and that pushed up gasoline and energy prices in the United States. However, the housing market wasn't included in that crisis. If we look at Japan in 1989, again, it was just two of the assets which were affected. It was the housing market and the stock market. The bond market and the commodity market weren't affected. In fact, I've done a whole video about the Japanese bubble and the crash which ensued, and Japanese equity markets still haven't recovered from that. Another super bubble which most of us now remember is the global financial crisis in 2006. But again, this only affected two asset classes, the housing market and the stock market. What really sets the current super bubble apart is that it spans all of these asset types. And that in turn suggests that the sell-off which we see this time around might be worse as a result. So if you look at US house prices, this is the Case-Shiller Index, you can see that prices have been going almost vertical recently after the pandemic. And if we look at the year-on-year -year growth rates, they are unprecedented at almost 20% per year. Although they have rolled over recently, they still haven't fallen to sustainable levels, which are roughly in line with wage growth. If we look at valuations in the US using something called the Schiller measure, which looks at the price of the stock market today divided by profits over the previous decade, so it's a measure of euphoria and it measures expensiveness. So the average expensiveness of the US stock market is when people pay $17 for every dollar of profits over the previous decade. Things are a little bit expensive when we're one standard deviation above that mean. Things are very expensive when we're two standard deviations above the mean. And the equity market's exceptionally expensive if we're three standard deviations above the mean. Now, we crossed that level in 2000 with the dot-com bubble, and we touched that level recently in 2020. And although markets have certainly sold off since then, they're by no means cheap, according to this measure. We're still above one standard deviation, almost two in fact, above the average valuation. Now, the bond market doesn't really have a kind of expensiveness measure. All we can really say is what are the yields on US Treasuries? And here I've shown the one-year, 10-year, and 20-year yield for US Treasuries. So that's roughly how much income you're going to be paid if you buy a US government bond. And as yields fall, prices rise. So you can see we've had a bull market in Treasuries, which has lasted almost 40 years. And it's only recently that yields have started to rise and bond prices have started to fall, very sharply in some cases. So again, this is another asset class where the bubble certainly started to deflate, but Grantham thinks it could fall further. And the asset class we're acutely aware of is gasoline prices, which surged after the pandemic, and that in turn increased inflation massively. So the top panel here shows US gasoline prices, which have actually peaked now and they are starting to fall. And it also shows European natural gas prices, which have peaked and have also started to fall, but certainly they're nowhere near levels they were at during normal times. So Grantham makes a good point that even after things have peaked, 
we're still at expensive levels across multiple asset classes. And that in turn suggests that there could be further for these prices to fall in future. Grantham characterizes the life cycle of a super bubble into four stages. The first stage is when the bubble forms, and this time round it was pretty much triggered by very easy monetary policy, which lasted a very long time. We had successive stages of quantitative easing after the financial crisis, and we had interest rates at zero across much of the developed world. Now that in turn very much favoured risky behaviour and buying equity. But a lot of that price growth was fundamentally driven because earnings growth is favoured by low interest rates. The party ends when some kind of setback occurs. Now in the case of 2022, it's very much been driven by inflation and monetary policy being tightened by central banks and interest rates rising. Another problem, particularly in Europe, has been the commodity shock. That in turn has fed inflation. But eventually this could also affect European growth if manufacturing has to be shut down due to commodity prices, but also a shortage of commodities as Russia has effectively cut its supply to Europe. The next stage, which we've also seen, is a bear market rally. This is when markets seem to be increasing again as people pile back into equity, for example, but then it reaches a top and starts to sell off again to a new low. We've already seen two of those bear market rallies and the third one is certainly looking like it would eventually find a new bottom. And then the fourth stage, according to Grantham, is about fundamentals deteriorating. Now, by fundamental, what we mean is corporate earnings, but also margins and, of course, economic variables like growth and inflation. So if we look at the US equity market over the course of this year, you can see that it was at its peak at the beginning of the year. Then we had a bear market rally, which was in spring and it was a pretty big rally, but then markets found a new bottom. That was in summer of this year. Then we had a brief rally and a new bottom. And since the June low, we've actually risen by about 17%. But it's looking like that also might be a bear market rally as equity markets have sold off again. Before we move on to why bear market rallies are so rapid, but also what the fourth stage entails, let me just quickly mention NordVPN, which I use to connect to my brokerage account when I'm out and traveling. So if I'm trying to connect to my hotel network, I can ensure that all of my details are encrypted. And if there is a man in the middle trying to sniff out my passwords, they won't be able to do that. This is what NordVPN looks like on my desktop, but I could equally use it on my phone, my iPad, or if I had one, a Macintosh computer. But if I want to connect to one of NordVPN servers and secure my connection, I just type NordVPN connect. And then it lets me choose from servers all across the world. So say for example, I was in France, I could just choose a server in the United Kingdom. And there we are. Now I'm connected to a UK server as if I was logged in from the UK. In my browser, it's even easier. Notice that I'm unprotected if you look at the top of this screen. But if I want to connect, I just choose the Chrome app. I choose the UK server and now I'm protected. So if I refresh this page, you can see that my status is now green. That means that all of my traffic's encrypted and it's safe from prying eyes. Viewers of Pensioncraft get a special deal from NordVPN where you get four months free access to the VPN and NordVPN cybersecurity package. And that comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. And to get access to that, just go to this link, which will also be in the description of the video, nordvpn.com slash pensioncraft. So if I go to that link in my browser, nordvpn.com slash pensioncraft, here it is with four months free. According to Grantham, there's a reason why bear market rallies are so rapid, and it's to do with the psychology of investors. So beside me here, you can see the price of Invitae, which was one of the darlings of the stock market rally in 2020, but then it sold off very sharply. Now, during the lead up to the all time high, market participants were probably thinking, well, nobody's ever bought the stock at this price. And that probably made them more hesitant when they were buying. Whereas after the crash, people are thinking it was trading at $57 before, now it's trading at far lower than $10, so maybe it can reach $60 again. 
So this makes them more willing to pile into the equity market because they think it offers a bargain. And many of the bear market rallies in the past have been very rapid. For example, the one in 1929 happened between November and April of the next year. So that was just a five month period and it was a 50% rally and it recovered more than half of the loss up to that point. In 73, in the summer of that year, there was also a huge rally in the S&P 500, which recovered most of the losses so far at that point. With the dot-com bubble, exactly the same thing happened. There was a tearing rally of 60%, which happened in just two months. But of course, markets bottomed again after that. And of course, in 2022, we've just seen a huge rally that was in the summer of 2022. And that made back 58% of the losses up to that point. So just because markets have rallied, don't be pulled into full risk on mode. A little bit of caution is warranted because it might just be a bear market rally. Now, if we look at valuations for the S&P 500 right now, you can see that it's come down a lot since the beginning of this year. So it's roughly at the 10 year average forward price to earnings multiple. But if we look at the long term average, the 60 year average of the price to earnings multiple, we'd still have to fall 12% to get to that level. And that would just take us to fair value. So equity markets are certainly not cheap at this point. And that's assuming that we don't get fundamentals starting to weaken. So if the forecast earnings fell further, then that support would in turn fall. And all of these averages would also fall because they're based on those rather optimistic forecasts. The last act of the super bubble is weakening fundamentals. And what Grantham says is that in the final stages, everything always looks near perfect. So full employment, and many people quote the fact that the US employment market is the strongest it's been for 50 years with very low unemployment rates. Strong GDP, not so much. We've had two quarters of negative growth, but not a lot of negative growth. And a lot of people are still talking about a soft landing for the Fed. We certainly do have inflation that's still very high in the US, but it is seeming to fall. But we are seeing very high US corporate margins. US companies are still very profitable despite very high inflation. So they're passing on their very high input costs to their customers. But this is not unique. Exactly the same thing happened in 1929, 1972 and 1999 in the US and in the bubble in Japan in the 80s. It simply takes a while for corporate earnings to deteriorate, but also for economic data to catch up with the true state of the economy. And GMO has a very simple model based on three variables, which you can see here, which tells you what a fair price to earnings ratio is based on the state of the economy. And you can see it tracked historical price to earnings pretty well. So their model is in red and the actual price to earnings ratio is in black. Notice how recently there's been a huge divergence. Inflation explains part of the sell-off that we've seen so far, but there's much more bad news to digest. Valuations should be much lower than they are today. In fact, equity markets should be about 25% lower in order to price in all of this bad news. Now, if you look at broker forecasts, they have started to downgrade their forecast earnings, but only by a little bit. They're still forecasting year-on-year -year growth for Q3, but they have started to revise that down. You can see this blue line starting to fall, but it's only been downgraded very slightly by about 6%. So what near term problems could trigger this 25% sell off from where we are today? It's hard to get excited about fertilizer, but in fact, it underpins many prices in agriculture. And because Russia and Belarus account for about 40% of the global exports of potash, which is one of the major ingredients into fertilizer that could in turn push up prices for fertilizer. Then you get the prices of crops like soybean and wheat increasing as well. Now we've already seen increased food and energy prices start to affect emerging markets in particular. We've seen civil disorder in Sri Lanka, for example, largely as a result of that. And in Europe, commodity prices have surged and caused this energy shock which is almost sure to tip Europe into recession. China is another fairly reliable source of crises, and you can see its GDP growth was above 5% pretty much all of the time since before 2000. During the pandemic, it fell very sharply, then it had a big rebound, but now it's had a second dip. 
Now, part of that is due to its zero COVID policy and the pandemic simply hasn't gone away. Also, the Chinese property complex has imploded. We've seen companies start to go bankrupt in China. And of course, there's a lot of the economy that depends on the construction industry. It makes up almost a fifth of Chinese GDP. Now, it's not just China which has seen real estate weakness. We're also starting to see that in other overpriced countries, such as the US, Canada and Australia, but also the UK. And it's likely to hit hardest in countries where you don't fix mortgages for long periods of time. And that would be countries like Australia, Spain, the UK and Canada. Notice that's not the US where you can get 30-year fixed mortgages. Grantham also points out that all of the largesse during the COVID period, when governments were spending lots of money to keep the economy ticking over, is now dried up. Now, when the government has a deficit, that's usually good for corporate profits. That's because the two are on opposite sides of a ledger that sums to zero. So when the government deficit goes up, that means that margins, corporate margins, usually go up as well. And that's good for the equity market. However, recently what we've seen is that deficits have gone down. And that in turn will be bad for corporate margins. And he gives many examples of that in the past. Now, some people dismiss Grantham as a perma bear, someone who's always bearish. So here's an article by Robin Wigglesworth in the FT where he's a little bit dismissive of Grantham. So he says that aside from fretting over the imminent death of our planet, Jeremy Grantham seems to be enjoying himself. And here he's referring to the subject of this video. Periodic grumbling about markets being overvalued in all of these years saw him dismissed once again as an old perma bearish sourpuss. And he points out that GMO did very well after the financial crisis. That's when the bearish story chimed very well with what was going on in markets. But after we got that huge decade-long rally, GMO fell out of favour. So I think it's true that he is a little bit bearish a lot of the time, but I still think his arguments are worth listening to. He certainly called a lot of what's happened this year correctly so far. Maybe his timing was a little bit too early. In conclusion then, Grantham is warning that you shouldn't be drawn to take too much risk in the latest rally. That's because the triple bubble may still be deflating. Now, so far, fundamentals have held up pretty well. For example, if you look at US corporate earnings, they've been pretty good up to Q2. However, we could see a deterioration of those fundamentals. And if that happens, we could see a downside of 25%. But I'd also add that this isn't reason to panic. If you are drip feeding into your portfolio, then these lower prices will actually give you higher returns over the long term. So personally, at least, I've carried on drip feeding into equity in the core portion of my portfolio. So is Grantham right or is he a perma bear? Well, I certainly think he makes some good points, particularly about the housing market. If that does start to collapse, then that would have a negative effect on sentiment. And with earnings as well, if we start to see those fall into negative territory year on year, again, that would take away a backstop for the equity market. Now, don't forget our offer from NordVPN. You can get a link to that in the description of this video. It's just nordvpn.com slash pensioncraft. And as always, thank you for listening.